Happy to be in studio with the Admiral, who used the word obstinate earlier in the uh, commercial break. That's a big one, Bill. I like yeah, it. but... To I, describe himself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is uh, Hall & Oates playing us back in the break. They're suing each other, by the way. I don't know if you heard no. about that. They, they actually, Hall & Oates are uh, in a fight uh, against each other over some stuff. I'm, I'm stunned. Yes. Well, you you must be stunned. You, I loved hauling out. How can they sue each other? Really anybody can sue anybody. I know. That's how I life know. works sometimes, right? Huh. Lawsuit against each other. Lisa Henry is in the studio from the Backpack Program. We are up to December 6th, which means in another uh, two weeks, I guess, schools are out for Christmas break. And that presents a challenge to those kids who don't have enough food in their own homes. And that's where Lisa Henry comes in. Lisa, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me here. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you in studio. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, this is a very, very busy time of year because not only are we doing the regular weekend bags of food, we are also preparing to do the winter break bags of food, which we will give two large bags per student to try to get them help get them through the winter break. And in addition, we're also handing out, we um, it's an option for families to come pick up Christmas boxes from us, which is a box of family food and a box of household goods, such as paper goods, cleaning products, hygiene products, all of which are necessary, but you cannot use SNAP for. So those are uh, three different things going on right now, and we have volunteers right now at our facility packing those boxes and bags, getting ready for this busy month of December. Okay, and what is your final date for collection and distribution on these items? Um, so the bags will go out to uh, the students at the schools December 18th, and we're handing out the family boxes this weekend. And so, but this is really a time of year that we need, um, especially monetary donations. And it's also, a, a, if you're a business and need some tax write-offs, we are a 501c3. Uh, so please consider um, helping us out because this is our most expensive time of year by far. Uh, how much money do you think you might need to get through this one? Um, usually, um, food costs about twelve thousand per month um, on average. But um, with the winter break and um, f at the food boxes, it's at least twenty thousand this month. So. Um, Small and large donations are, are very welcome. And I also want to thank everyone who has already donated either goods or money to the program. Uh, it really helps um, get us through the year and make sure that starting in January that um, we have the funds to make sure we have food going forward, keeping up with our regular weekend bags as well. Lisa, I know the answer to this, but I want to ask it anyway. You mentioned monetary gifts. Your program is all volunteer, so every penny that's given to you goes out for food for the families. Not every penny, okay. but a large percent, because we still do... Um, we have to have insurance. Um, okay. We need to mail things. There's state filing fees. Our rent is very, very low for our huge facility in the basement at 300 Foxcroft, thanks to Berkeley County Development Authority. Uh, they really support us and help us because without that facility, we wouldn't be able to do it. So um, a very, very small percentage goes to overhead because we have no salaries. None of the volunteers are reimbursed. So we can put almost all the money towards food. Yeah. So talk a little bit, Lisa, and again, like Bill, I sort of kind of know the answer to this. Um, how do people apply? Um, what's the process for children in schools, for their parents to, um, to get help from this program? So if you're listening and you feel that you could use help with food, either for this month, throughout the school year, or over the summer, you just need to reach out to your child's school. Call up the office and say that you would like to sign up your child for the weekend food bags, and that is it. So the schools then coordinate how many uh, students they have, and mm -hmm. then they give us a number each week. Um, for example, North Middle School is up to 120 bags a week. Um, that's our largest school, but um, many of the others get between um, 10 and 70 bags. So the guidance counselors give us a number, and we deliver that number to the schools every week. No questions asked, or how does Correct. that... We, we do not have, okay. um, because we are not using USDA food, we do okay. not have to have paperwork um, for income requirements. And that's something we really like about our, our 
our program is that it's easy to sign up. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of families in this gray zone. So if you're listening and you, you know, you're struggling, you do not have to have absolutely no food in your house. Like we want to help you purchase that food. So you are able to also, um, purchase foods for dinners, um, be able to pay other bills. So it is a way to, to help out, to take away that stress of, oh my gosh, this grocery bill is so high. I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover rent. Um, it's, it's especially needed now. And our numbers are up to 750 per week. We were at 700 last year at this time. Lisa, you mentioned the food bags. You also implied that uh, if somebody's grocery bill was too high, you would help them. Is this done via vouchers? Do you um, have cash or what? I meant because we're giving the food um, okay. to the kids. I yes, see. we okay. do not have any vouchers uh, okay. or okay. any program Very like right. that. Yeah. Um, but this is just a way to get hands into the food into the hands of the kids directly. It is kid-friendly um, food. It needs to be microwaved or fruit cup snacks. The kids can take care of it themselves, um, which which is a big part. And then, of course, there are many other wonderful um, nonprofits around the area that, that will help as well um, with food, such as CCAP, C-CAP and area and like, churches yeah, yeah. with their food banks. So ours is directed to help the kids directly. A mechanical question. Uh, I can imagine a six or seven year old given two large food bags to carry home for, for Christmas. How do they get them home? So we deliver those bags early. So we will deliver them um, either Monday or Tuesday or both to, to the schools. Oh, okay. To the schools. And then the schools then have three or four days to get those bags home. So, for example, if it is a small child and they have to take it home themselves, they might um, give one bag or part of a bag and divide it up for a small child. Um, the larger kids can probably take one Certainly. per day. Yeah. So we do it uh, when we have those bigger, um, like winter break, spring break, and Thanksgiving break. We deliver early, so there is the opportunity for the children to bring them home in parts instead of all at once. Do you ever make direct delivery to the home? Um, it, it has been done in special occasions. We mm. cannot do it on a, a regular basis due to our volunteer base. And so because we deliver to the schools and the schools, the kids are going to the school, it's also a way to encourage kids to make sure that they are going to school. So not only are they getting the uh, breakfast and lunches hot lunches from the schools they're also bringing home food for the weekend lisa henry our guest here from the backpack program you mentioned that in december instead of the regular monthly need of twelve thousand it shoots up to about twenty thousand dollars how do you make up the difference we apply for grants is one way so um uh, procter and gamble did give us ten thousand dollars to help with the purchase of food and snacks um that uh, we are needed for that bags and um, we also received a grant from the eastern western community fund um, to help with the christmas boxes so that is a small part but the rest is through donations and um, from individuals churches local businesses you have people you can donate to uh, the backpack program on the website do you have uh, a certain amount that comes in every month regardless because people who just donate regularly on the monthly site? Yes, we do have monthly donors, and that is especially helpful. So one option is on our website. You can choose to do a monthly donation. We have about, I think, about 20 individuals who do that, so we know, and a, a couple churches as well. So we know that money is coming in each and every month, um, and that really helps. Um, some people opt for a one-time donation. Um, so... We like either. How many years have you been doing this now, Lisa? My daughter was in kindergarten, and now she's a senior in high school. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> so say, 13 years. Just about as long as I've been hosting this show, you've been a mm-hmm. guest on this show. So we have, over the last 13 years, added more companies into Berkeley County. More corporations have moved in. They're paying fairly well. Has it helped the need for food for students in the schools? I think it's, I'm going to, okay, I don't have a scientific uh, survey, but I think it, it's balanced out. So while I'm saying our numbers are going up, I'm sure there are some families that are helped by the increased jobs available, but we also have more people moving into this area. So um, the schools, many of the schools are busting at the seams. Um, 
just we have a different problem than the rest of the state. We keep having people move in, um, which is a wonderful thing, um, but sometimes it's hard for our services to keep up. So we have been able to keep up with the need, and um, we're very grateful for that. What age do these kids usually age out of the backpack program? When they're seniors in high school. So we go through 12th grade. Will, will many of them remain in the program even through high school? Yes, um, our numbers do go down when you get to high, some high schools and middle schools. Um, some students are, they understandably uh, might be embarrassed to be seen to go pick up the food bags. We try to, and the schools try to make it um, um, as private as possible that um, I know one school puts the backpack bags in the kids' locker. Um, others, they go pick up in guidance with their backpack when they have a free time. Um, so despite this, some kids still um, tell their parents, like, I'm not picking up that food bag. So the younger siblings might be and the older may not. And then we're also able, though, to help those families in the summer because they are able to come to us directly. Um, so we're trying to fight against that stigma that it's okay if you need help with food, um, but middle school and high school can be a hard time for kids. For sure. Uh, for sure. Lisa, one of our contributors on the chat room, Jeff Haddock, said Kids Power Pack Program. Is that a separate program than yours? Yes. So there okay. is. So we um, do 25 schools in Berkeley County, and then Kids Power Pack does um, the other schools and most of Jefferson County. So all of Berkeley County schools are covered by our program or Kids Power Pack. So they are a wonderful program as well, and they do um, same thing as we do, get those so, weekend bags of food to the schools. So highly complimentary of the two. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Maria, do you have a final question for Lisa? Just, um, again, more of a, of a shout out. You know, I think we recognize that there are um, that there's an intense need all throughout and just you know you all have um, have come to the um, to the rescue of, of so many children and families over the years I mean 13 years that's nothing to um, to sneeze at so thank you for what you do thank you and I'd like to give a shout out to our volunteers um, we have our volunteers who lead the program that spend endless hours trying to coordinate everything. It is a huge undertaking to do 750 bags of food, mm. get them to 25 different schools. So we have an amazing delivery team <laughs> and our volunteers who go each and every week. And also thank you to those volunteers. We have businesses that come in um, once or twice a year, bring a group and volunteer as well. So thank you to everyone who's helped out. Don't go away just yet, Lisa. Uh, there is an urgent message here from Alert Berkeley. Of course, it involves ID1, the six-mile marker southbound just prior to the Inwood exit. It's shut down for a traffic accident, so don't use ID1 south if you have to go as far as uh, the Inwood exit. It's shut down right now and backing up, and I believe that covers all lanes, too, on southbound 81 of the six-mile marker. Uh, Lisa, uh, 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 finally, uh, to wrap this up, if you could review the dates when you need your collections in by for the different types of distributions you're doing before Christmas. So if you have food donations, and those can be um, non, they need to be non-perishable food only. We have drop boxes listed on our website, and those would need to be in um, by December 15th. Monetary donations can be made anytime. Um, always needed, um, but if you want that, um, if you're able to get a tax write-off and would like that, that then that would be December 31st for this year. And um, and thank you to everyone who has already donated this December. And the drop-off location is 300 Foxcroft Avenue? Uh, that is our facility, but because we're all volunteer, we are not there very often. So you need to call first. We have drop-box locations to help with that um, throughout the county. Um, probably our busiest ones are BCT Bank mm -hmm. in Hedgesville and, um, and in Martinsburg. Um, so... But check out for other locations as well throughout the county. So you can go to our drop boxes during their business hours, and we will pick it up to make it easy for everyone. And your website? Is feedbcwvkids.org, and our phone number is 304-268-0635. And if you can't buy food, you can make the donation at the website. Set it up that Absolutely. Way. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you.